Saurabh Muradi returns in terrifying fashion, Rosa Nuradinov's ban is up, and there is a new colourway for the weightlifting house thumb tape. Hello and welcome back to this week's episode of the Weightlifting House News Show, the only weightlifting news show in the world. So as I'm sure most of you all know, this was our first thumb tape, it was blue. This was our second thumb tape, it was pink. And now I'm very excited to announce the fact that we have this thumb tape. It is black with gold. And you know what I love about the packaging as well of this? Just the fact that the gold itself is, is like a shiny foil. So not only is the tape pretty sick, but so is the packaging too. So this is the Weightlifting House thumb tape. It is extra sticky. It's got extra adhesion on it. Very easy to tear. It's also seven meters, which is the longest thumb tape on the market. So it's the best value that you can buy. And just to show you the ease of putting this stuff on, it really is very simple. Thumb tape. So go grab yourself some Weightlifting House thumb tape, extra sticky, easy to tear, and the longest thumb tape available on the market. Another thing that I just realized that we should do at Weightlifting House, which is really for those of you out there who are disorganized, people who have a tendency and a proclivity to leave things to the last minute. As everybody knows, the postage system that's going on in the world right now is a little bit slow. There are some delays with Christmas and, and uh, supply and demand problems. And so if you are one of the people who needs to get a present for a coach or a weightlifter, a training partner, grab a Weightlifting House coupon or voucher, something like that. We have them now available. You can just go online and then you can type in the amount that you want to give to someone. They will then receive an email with a picture of the voucher and they can then basically spend that money at the Weightlifting House store. So there is no delays, it's just an instant transaction and the recipient will get that gift. So if you don't know what to get someone, give them the gift of choice at weightliftinghouse.com. So we haven't spoken about Team Iran in a long time and for good reason, I mean, they really haven't posted much at all. But some stuff has happened. The first thing, which I think is really interesting, is that Saeed Ali Hosseini, the once popped super heavyweight, popped in 2007, returned again in, in Anaheim, I believe it was 2017, and then retired shortly after. Incredibly strong lifter. He was just named the national junior team head coach. So he has now turned his talents, I suppose, to coaching and will be nurturing and, and helping grow this, this junior team in Iran. There was also a competition in Iran. It was called the Gohazamin Cup, I believe. And we saw the returns of a few major Iranian lifters, a few world champions and Olympic champions. The first and perhaps most famous of whom, of course, Kinush Rustami, who uh, incidentally also happens to be one of the weightlifters that I'm asked the most about with regards to Olympic qualification and that sort of thing. I'm fairly sure I've been through it a bunch of times, but very, very quickly again. He didn't get a total in the second of the three qualifying periods, which means that he basically has to achieve in three competitions what others can achieve in four with regards to rugby points. So unless he does something truly spectacular in totals, I think it's 425, which, you know, that's like the equivalent of 190 in the snatch, 235 in the clean and jerk, aka not going to happen. He's just not going to the Olympics. So anyway, Kinush competed, he went 170-207, so far from the 190-235 that he would need. He actually cleaned 214 and missed the jerk, and he took silver in a national event. So the 2016 Olympic champion 85 kilo clean and jerk world record holder is, uh, is subpar right now. Junior world record holder in the super heavyweight class, Ali Davoudi, who holds those records at 197, 237, had a spectacular meet. He probably lifted better than any of the other Iranians in actual fact. He snatched 205, hello yellow, finally got the yellows on the bar with the collars. That's a competition PR for him. It's more than we've ever seen from him hit anywhere, even in training as well, so that's fantastic. Then finally he hit that 240 kilo clean and jerk pretty easily in competition. So a 445 kilo total for Ali Davoudi who is, I think he's 20 now, so he might have another month or two to set official junior world records, I'm not sure. Um, but I'm not sure there's going to be a competition in time for him to do so. But even so, 205-244 Ali Davoudi. Then we've got a couple of 109s. The first, the more famous of whom, I suppose, Ali Hashemi, lifted pretty well. And then the guy that I've been pretty fanatical about on the Weightlifting House news show for the last few years, it's Kia Gadami. And the reason is just because Kia Gadami is such a filthy clean and jerk that you can sort of never count him out. 
Ali Hashemi, 176, 214, two time world champion, remember, 2017, 2018. Admittedly, in a relatively comfortable, well, it was, I suppose, a 105 class and then it was a 102 class, wasn't it? But even so, relatively comfortable there. Once he moved up to 109, it was game over. Couldn't hack it with the big boys. But Kia Gadami, 180, so beats Ali Hashemi in the snatch by four kilos, 230. I mean, that's big. The world record's 240. We've seen him do more in, in training, which is incredible, over the world record. But 230, 10 kilos under the world record, destroyed Ali Hashemi by 16 and 4, 20 kilos in the total. Very exciting. But the person we've all been waiting for, we, we've, we've been waiting for this guy for a long time, and the conversations surrounding this legend are uh, extensive. Sarah Muradi has finally posted a training video. Now this training video, or maybe it was a competition online video, I'm not sure, was on his story. So it didn't last around for long, but I did the right thing. I screen recorded, I have the video, we can watch it. And it's a snatch. Now, I think that this snatch is 180 kilos. Bear in mind, we've seen Sarah Muradi, he snatched 186 for the world record in his first ever competition as a 96 in this new 96 kilo weight class back in 2017, 2018, pardon. He snatched 186 there. He's done 189 he did as a 94 kilo weightlifter for a world record. He snatched 200 and 205 kilos in training, the best snatch by Sinclair on video. I think that actually beats the 195.5 by Blagojev in the 90 kilo class. Though, of course, it was in training, and we actually don't know how much he weighed. So if he weighed over 100 kilos, then it's not a better lift. But assuming he was like 94, which he probably wasn't. Anyway, I'm digressing here. All of this to say that Sarab is a sens sensational snatcher. I think this is 180. To me, this looks like 25s. Because there, look, there are four different widths of, of large plate on this. So surely we're looking at 25s, 15s, 20s, and 10s, which we all know that's the full rainbow, that's 160. There are a couple of fives outside of that, 170, 2.5s, collars, we're looking at 180 kilos. This is just six kilos below his world record. This is just three kilos below the next left that I'm going to get into from Mezzo Hisona, who just snatched a new PR of 183 as well. This is finally up there again with everyone else. And the thing with Sarab is that it looks easy but difficult and painful what i mean by that is the pull looks strong the height on the bar is is tremendous and he doesn't even catch it particularly low but we know that he has a bad shoulder and so it just looks a bit painful a little bit unstable but it almost looks as though he'd have the same likelihood of making 170 as he would 190 it's just whether the shoulder fancies holding the weight overhead so once again the question returns will sarab Muradi go to the olympics well the answer to that is that Probably not, but it depends. Unlike Kianush, we did see a total by Sarab Muradi in the second qualifying period. It was terrible. It happened in Tramlan. I filmed it. I watched it. And he received something like 90 Roby points. He still has one additional competition that he can go to, the Asian Championships this year, presumably a gold tier event. And if he puts forward a, a total that he did in 2018, for example, a, a 416 total, if you will, so 186, 230, something around there, receives another 1,250 Roby points, moving him from 3,100 to 43, 4,400. He might then be the guy who receives the continental slot. I don't think that'll put him in the top eight. In fact, we can pull up the list here so you can see the top eight of the 96s. Once you remove a couple of duplicate athletes, he moves up. I think he's going to hold that that top spot basically in Asia outside of the top eight. So, but but that's only if he does something totally unheard of. Obviously, I will be there in Asia for these Asian Championships if they go ahead, and I, and I'll film it and I'll film his training and try and give some kind of context to the build up of this. But you know, I'm an optimistic guy. I kind of like the idea of Sarab going to the Olympics. I didn't do it due credit. Uh, I didn't give this the attention that, that it deserves. Mezzo Hosona, 183. Uh, he told me that it feels good. He's going to attempt something a little bit heavier on the 20th, I think it was. What's the date today? 16th. So in a few days, certainly by next week, we might have 
another total from Mezzo as he attempts to beat his 230 from last week and this 183. Perhaps we'll see an 84, 231. Perhaps we'll see an 87, 232. It's unlikely, but it's possible. Over now to Ecuador, a lift that I'm putting early on in the show because I actually forgot to mention it when it happened back in November. We have Nacy de Homes, 76 kilo weightlifter. She took bronze in the snatch at Worlds 2019 with 110. She just hit 115 kilos off blocks in the snatch. And now I, th- I think the world record could be something ridiculous like 126. I, th- I think it's something truly ridiculous. But behind the North Korean and, and the Chinese lifter, Nacy de Homes is, is just right up there in the snatch. And so this 115 off blocks is, is pretty filthy and easily deserves a spot in the show. Over to Australia, we have the strongest powerer in the world, perhaps Aileen Sukumatana. Obviously, that doesn't include Shizu Young, who could forget. She just went 112-156 at the OWF Online Cup, I think it was called. Oceana Weightlifting Federation Online Cup probably is what that is. Uh, she competed, I believe, in the 81 kilo weight class. Her PRs before this, 115, 151, that she did in Fiji 2019. So three kilos below her best snatch, but that clean and jerk, 156, five kilos over what she hit there. So she's really starting to, to turn into a, uh, well, a world beater, basically. Over in Japan, Toshiki Senpai has once again changed his name on Instagram. He changes it every time he hits a new PR. So I think it's now Toshiki170215 because he hit 215. I think before this, it was 207. So this is a huge jump. But the rumors are true. They The prophecy has been foretold. Toshiki is no longer an 85. He's no longer an 89. He's not really even a 96. 85 kilo Toshiki now weighs 99.8 kilos. He is so thick that it's it's kind of ridiculous. I I wouldn't be surprised if his Sinclair and Robles have steadily been getting worse at this point as he's been gaining weight because the improvements that he's seeing in his lifts can't keep up with the weight that he's gaining. But he certainly hits the world record for thickest boy in, in weightlifting. So we'll give him that. But 215 kilos, that's a new PR for him in the clean and jerk. And it's a pretty nice lift. The clean, obviously, very easy, very comfortable. The jerk is always what he's been he's been working on. He's never been the best technician out there. Though some people seem to swear by the fact that he moves the best, but he really doesn't. Uh, but 215, it's pretty good for Tashiki. The 2016 Olympic gold medalist clean and jerk... Olympic record holder, person who has snatched in the 105 kilo class 190 or more, more than anyone in the world, Ruzan Nurdinov is back. His ban is over. So he was banned uh, in, in 2018 for his 2012 London Olympics performance. The ban is up on the, the 18th, 17th, 17th of December, which is tomorrow, but is today or yesterday based on when you're watching this now here's here's the thing now Rosin Rodino phenomenal weightlifter one of my favorite weightlifters to watch growing up you know I've I've been watching him for a long time you know that 2014 finish epic but 2012 he was banned for 184 220 it's a 404 total in 2016 he did 194 237 it's a 431 kilo total that's 27 kilos more than the total for which he was banned. But that's just how the IWF works. So anyway, Roslin is back, and, and you know what? He's now recognized an athlete by the IWF again, therefore we can talk about him again. So let's talk about him. 190 clean and power jerk, triple, clean power jerk, clean power jerk, clean power jerk, very impressive. 185 snatch, that's you know within uh, 11 kilos, I think, of his competition best. 220 clean and jerk, the most we've seen him clean and jerk. 239 2014 210 clean front squat jerk so he looks close to to par shape i mean i think he's probably within uh 10 of his best for sure at this point so you know whether or not we'll see him competing at the highest of levels again in the future i i don't know but i wouldn't be surprised if he enters himself into the asian championships next year and uh and by next year i mean 2021 it's in ashgabat i believe in april April 15th to 25th, I shall be there, which will be exciting. Uh, but he might even put on the kind of show that, that, I mean, he could win the 109s. He could win the 109s and beat Yang Zhe. 
Are there any other 109s in Asia that he'd be up against? Uzbekistan, yes, he'd be up against Akbar Jurayev. That would be really fun. Gosh, that would be great. But then, of course, Simon Martirosian is Europe. So I think those would be his two competitors, Akbar Jurayev and Yangzhou. He could win. That would be a, I mean, that would be kind of crazy to see. Over in Estonia, we have Mart Fima Saim, who just hit 340 kilos for a triple in the back squat. Strength is, is, is more than back. It's funny, with Mart Saim, it's like strength is coming back. But whilst it's coming back, he's actually hitting lifts that no other weight lift in the world is really hitting. 340 for a triple. There's no other super heavyweight who's posting videos of a 340 triple right now. Just not at all. Maybe Aishiro Murakami, you know, maybe back in the day did 330 for a triple. But 340 for a triple, just getting back is, is mad. Over in Latvia, Ritvasu Harov's 203 kilo clean and jerk, two kilos below his best. And he's making this sort of weight look so regular and comfortable and routine. He did 201 a few weeks ago, then 202, now 203 at 82.5 kilos in body weight. He competes on the 19th, which is Saturday. So we'll see what he does there. Will he cut to 81? Will he just go in as a, a very light 89? I don't know. Uh, but it'll be really exciting to see if he can kind of finally get that yellow on the board as well and, and hello yellow it in competition. Over to France now, we have the slowest puller of all time. It's Redon Manouchi, 160 kilo snatch he just hit, and he doesn't even compete properly anymore, and he can still hit this at, I mean, he probably weighs 89 right now. He put in the video, ralenti et vitesse normale, which means the slow motion video and the normal speed video, and I'll be honest, I couldn't even tell which was slow-mo. Well, when I was watching the slow-mo at first, for the first couple seconds, I thought I might have been watching the normal speed because he is the slowest puller of all time. It was only when I went to normal speed, I realized that maybe I'd, I'd over the pudding there with the slow-mo. But even so, slowest puller of all time, epic to watch. And I think he's going to be going for 170 soon at Power Camp. So Louis, who, who runs and is a great guy at Power Camp, uh, I believe he's going to film it, send it over, we'll edit it up, and we'll get out a, a heavy snatch session from Red Manushi on YouTube for you guys shortly. Over to Great Britain, it's Stefano the weightlifter, aka Stefano Cataldi, just a freak weightlifter, 81 kilos, 17 years old. When I was 17 years old, one, I didn't weigh 81 kilos. I mean, I was way smaller than that, I'm sure. But I think when I was 17, I'm not joking, I was benching maybe 60 kilos, probably squatting 80. Stefano just cleaned 170. That's eight kilos over his best clean and jerk. I think he just snatched 23 or 26 or something like that too. If you're not watching Stefano and you're not following him on, online, you, you really need to. Stefano with an F, Stefano the weightlifter, 17, 170 clean. Uh, huge talent for, for GB. Okay, over now to the USA. We've only got one lifter because in, in the USA, basically everybody trained hard, competed. We went through all of that last week. And then like a reasonable person, they take some time off. Like a reasonable person. An unreasonable person would be Morgan McCullough, who despite snatching 140 at Nationals and I think having the highest Roby points or second highest Roby points from the, the junior lifters or youth. I don't know. I don't know. He's 17. He, he hit the 140, and then he unreasonably, the following days, did 141, and then 142. PRs since the competition, he just doesn't care. He takes no time off. He, he does what he wants. So shout out to Morgan McCullough for that. Over now to Colombia. We have 33-year-old Mercedes Perez. Now, she placed fourth at Worlds. She took bronze in the clean and jerk. Oh, I should have I should, I should remembered what she hit. What did she hit? The, let's have a look. What did she hit at Worlds? Okay, here we go. Mercedes Perez hit 132 at the World Champs in the clean and jerk. Well, at 33 years of age, having competed in 12 World Championships, the first in 2005. 2005, we're talking like Ilya, 17 years old in Doha, taking the gold. We're talking Dmitry Klokov winning. That, that, I mean, 2005 is a long time ago for Klokov to have won. Um, she just hit 101 kilos in the snatch in what looked like a training comp uh, type of session. So it looked somewhat official, but not really official. So 
amazing lifting from her. And then finally heading down even further to Brazil, inspired by Mezzo's 230 kilo clean and jerk, we have Fernando Reis also hitting 230 kilos in the clean and jerk. Now, Fernando's not as good as Mezzo, technically, but obviously he lifts more than Mezzo. I mean, Fernando's amazing, like an amazing weightlifter, but he's not, he's not a, I mean, Mezzo's not a world champion, but he's not a world silver medalist, and, you know, Mezzo could hit a world record. Probably not going to happen for Fernando living in the age and era of someone like Clasher, but I would really like to see these lifts side by side because it's funny, we know that Fernando can hit more than than uh, Mezzo, but I wonder if Mezzo makes it look easier. But I think that's partly because Fernando has this excess of strength. Not 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 that Mezzo doesn't have a huge amount of leg strength in excess, but Fernando has a huge amount of strength. That it, you know, I mean, he's he's a strong guy, um, and so I think he can make heavier weights look tougher because he can be strong enough to move slowly. Mezzo kind of has to move fast, because if he doesn't move fast, he can't produce enough force on the old force-velocity thing. Mezzo's here, Fernando's here. That, that's how we're looking at this. So I'm kind of interested to see who moves this faster. Okay, you know what? That is actually the end of this week's episode of the news show. We kind of got through it relatively quick. We didn't have anything crazy to do. We do have the people's lift, so don't go anywhere. Before we do that, guys, don't forget, weightlifting house thumb tape. I'm not joking, it's the sickest thumb tape. Five centimeters wide, seven meters long, extra adhesive, three rolls per pack, lift more, hurt less. We've got the pink, the blue, and the black. It's available in a lot of different places. Uh, if you're not sure if you live in a country where you can get it, i.e. you're not in the USA or Europe or something, just go to Amazon and you can probably get it there because Amazon ships to a lot of places, so that's good. Uh, also, don't forget, if you haven't yet bought a gift for your coach or athlete or whoever it might be, Grab them a weightlifting house voucher. That way it's an instant transfer. You don't have to worry about the fact that your present might not turn up. And then they can just choose what they want, which may well be the weightlifting house thumb tape. Head over to Virus International. Use discount code weightlifting house for 10% off all virus clothing. I am, of course, wearing my virus, whatever these are called, trackies. I've also got my virus socks on, which is super bougie, but I just really like them. So thanks for virus for those. Uh, but yeah, discount code Weightlifting House gives you 10% off all of that stuff. Okay, it's time for the people's lifts. The first lifter... Now, I know that I've put this guy on before. He's a friend of mine, and he claims he hasn't been on the news show, which is ridiculous. Uh, but finally, he's done something which warrants him getting on again. So I'm talking about my friend Ed. Ed Smale. Edward Smale on Instagram. 89 kilo weightlifter. I could well have been the first person who even showed him how to lift, I think. He, I was a coach, weightlifting coach. This was maybe two and a half years ago. He turned up at the gym that I was coaching at, and I think I might have been the person who got him into weightlifting, or he'd started a month earlier or something like that. And and he was pretty strong, and he was getting pretty good. He would played rugby, he'd squatted 200 kilos or something like that in the past, which is, you know, that's a great place to be coming in from. And uh, I think he got up to, like, you know, maybe snatching 100 and at the time, I was sort of snatching 115, so I was outlifting him. I was feeling really good about myself. I could outlift this guy. And um, it's been two years, and he just block snatched 140. <laughs> he just snatched 132.5, and then he jerked 170. Three lifts, all of which are above anything I can do right now. So shout out to the progress. Shout out to the journey. Uh, go follow Ed Smell because he's probably going to block snatch 150 and jerk 180 soon and he'll be competing internationally pretty soon as well so go follow ed smale next we have a gym 306 weightlifting 306 306 weightlifting posted a video of nada 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 snatching 53 kilos with the, the reason i brought this one up is because it's just interesting to see how different people move based on their body type obviously a snatch is a wider grip the width of this snatch this is gormanassian levels of width this is like you know, the the Armenian slash Austrian absurd width where the bar is almost behind the back of your head when you catch it. So I was kind of impressed just by that. I can't do that. My shoulders won't hold it. I like to have a slightly narrow grip. So shout out to Nada at 306 weightlifting. Next, we have Joseph Menzi. His goal in 2021, which is a long-term goal. I mean, I imagine having a goal of something you want to hit in 2021 before the end of 2020. It was, a, it was the front squat 130 for a triple, which again is always just a kind of weird goal to have, I suppose. But anyway, he hit it already in 2020, so he's a year ahead of schedule. 
if man, if I was, it doesn't matter. A year ahead of schedule, hits the 130 triple, so he needs to make another goal. He said that maybe he can just aim to make it smoother. I say that's a terrible goal. You should at least try and triple 140 in 2021. Or at least get a sneaky 50 single in there, something like that. I don't know. But anyway, Joseph Menzi absolutely smashing his his goal. So shout out to Joseph. Oh, oh, and on Instagram, that is Menzi Joseph, M-E-N-Z. No, it's not. It's Menz. It's not Menzi. It's Menz Joseph. Apologies, Joseph. M-E-N-Z-J-O-S-E-P-H. And finally, we have Ceci JVR. Which I think is something that means something in America. JVR, it's like a junior something. Let me see. Oh, no, I was wrong. It's a consultancy firm. <laughs> That's where I'd heard of it. it. has nothing to do with being American. Uh, Ceci JVR, Ceci Greg is her actual name. C-E-C-E-J-V-R on Instagram. Uh, no PRs here, but just love the effort, love the fight of this training session. 64 kilo snatch, very fast. 80 kilo clean and jerk, double which again was a, a struggle and, and great lockout. And then an epic grind at 105 kilos on the front squat. So this is just a kind of day-to-day -day training. Uh, and I love to see it. So shout out to Ceci at Ceci JVR, Nada at 306 Weightlifting, Ed Smale at Edward Smale, and Joseph Menz at Menz Joseph. Guys, at the end of this week's episode of the Weightlifting House News Show, thumb tape. I don't know how to say it. I don't know what to say anymore. This is the greatest sum tape out there. Hugely appreciate you tuning in, and I'll catch you all on another episode of the Weightlifting House News Show.